first of all, what do we mean by breaking distance? Well, breaking distance includes several things. The perception time, the reaction time, and the actual distance that the vehicle comes to a complete stop. Now, with trucks, you got to add in also brake lag, which basically means that from the moment you push the brake pedal, it takes the air a while to get to the brake chamber and actually activate the brakes. The brake lag differs from truck to truck, so because there are different brake systems installed on each truck. Perception distance or reaction time is the distance your vehicle travels from the moment you realize that you need to hit the brakes until you actually hit the brakes. Then, like I said, for trucks, you also have the brake lag. After the brake lag, you also have the actual braking distance, which is the distance that the vehicle comes to a complete stop from a moving point in time. At 65 miles per hour, a truck's stopping distance is double than the one of a regular car stopping distance. A truck takes almost the length of two football fields to come to a complete stop, whereas a car's stopping distance is about one football field. In addition to the weight differences between those two vehicles, there are other factors that contribute to the stopping distance of a truck. And those are road conditions, speed, and experience or intuition of the driver. Let's talk about how these factors affect the stopping distance of a truck. Distracted driving is actually the main cause for accidents on the road. You need to understand the consequences of you actually looking down and uh, taking your eyes off of the road. So let's talk about that. Uh, for educational purposes, let's say that it takes you on average about seven to 10 seconds to reply to a, to a normal text message, right? For seven seconds going at 65 miles an hour, you will have traveled 670 feet. Now you may say, that's not a lot, but let's put things into perspective. Brought with me today, a uh, wheel type of measure and you will see what those numbers that you saw on the screen actually mean and how far your vehicle travels by the time it comes to a complete stop. Hey, real quick, 99% of you are not subscribed to our channel. We would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button below. It's free, it doesn't cost you a thing, but it helps us motivate us to create more informative videos like this one. So just hit the subscribe button and now let's get back to the video. The truck is ground zero. From here, according to the video, it says perception time is 71 feet. Let's count 71 feet and see where we end up. We are at zero and we will start going 71 feet. Right now, we are at almost 72 feet but this is the distance that the truck travels by the time you realize that there is something going on on the road and that you need to stop. And now from this distance here, it takes the truck 454 feet to come to a complete stop. Now let's see where that is. Four, five, five. And this is the distance it would take for the truck to stop. And that's actually during good driving conditions. Adverse uh, weather conditions, they could cause uh, even longer uh, braking times. Now add to this distance another 150 feet and you will have the distance that you actually traveled without looking at your phone. Now that is scary. So if you add the distance that you've traveled with your truck while you were looking actually at your phone, uh, add that to the distance it takes uh, for your truck to come to a complete stop, you'll get almost a quarter of a mile. Now that is a lot of road to cover and to make sure that you don't hit nothing and nobody. So you may wonder how do road conditions affect the braking distance of a truck or even a car for that matter. During inclement weather conditions, whether it is snow, rain, ice, fog, visibility on the road reduces to almost nothing. And the faster you travel, the more you reduce your actually your reaction time and you increase that reaction distance that we previously talked about. In addition to that, when it rains, your vehicle may actually hydroplane. Hydroplaning is a very dangerous process. It, it happens when your vehicle hits a puddle of water on the road and it actually floats on top of that water. Well, when your vehicle is hydroplaning, you cannot control where the vehicle is going or how fast it's going. You cannot decelerate, you cannot steer, you cannot do anything. So hydroplaning is really, really dangerous and can cause some serious accidents. 
Needless to say, during snow or icy conditions, your vehicle's traction with the road is reduced uh, to almost nothing. And again, higher speeds can cause some serious accidents. Speed. Interstates and highways are not a racing track and should not be treated as such. I'm actually guilty myself of speeding on the highways, even though I know I shouldn't. But the point is, uh, appointments can be rescheduled, whereas lives cannot be replaced. So just keep that in mind next time you are uh, speeding down the road, trying to get to your pickup or your delivery destination. Weight and how does it affect truck stopping distance? You see, a regular car may weigh somewhere between three and 6,000 pounds, whereas a truck may weigh between 30 and 80,000 pounds. That is 10 times and more the weight of a regular car. This is the main difference why the stopping distance for a car is much uh, lower than the one for a truck. If you see a truck with a lot of space in front of him, do not merge right away, cut him off and merge into that space. The driver has intentionally left that space due to his weight and keeping in mind his stopping distance. By you just cutting him off and merging in front of him, you are actually putting yourself in a dangerous position where in case traffic comes to a full stop, he won't be able to stop in time. It's important to know that an empty trailer actually takes longer to stop compared to a, a loaded trailer. The combination vehicles brakes actually work best when they're under a load. The weight actually keeps the tires on the ground so that when the brakes are applied, the tire does not bounce. Uh, on an empty trailer, when the brakes are applied suddenly, the tires may start bouncing. And if the tire is off the ground, obviously there is no traction and it cannot halt the combination vehicle. Weight can be actually a friend to truck drivers when it comes to snowy conditions or even rain. You see, the weight keeps the vehicle grounded and kind of like stuck to the asphalt, to the ground, to the roadway. The heavier the truck, the better traction it creates on the road. This, however, does not mean that you can just go ahead and speed on uh, during bad weather conditions because you are actually putting the lives of other people in danger by uh, your actions. So be mindful and even though you might be heavily loaded, just keep in mind that you need to be a role model for the other drivers and not the one that is causing the issues on the road. Is it the lack of experience or intuition that puts a lot of drivers in some bad situations? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Experience is actually a subjective subject to discuss. The reason why is you may have experience driving a car, but not as much experience of driving a truck. You may also have experience driving a truck, yet be inexperienced when it comes to handling tricky situations. You may not have experience driving a truck, but you actually may have some intuition on how you need to act uh, when it comes to some difficult situations, and therefore you handle those situations appropriately. So. Intuition experience, comment below.